Okay, hi. Um, so we'll give it a second and see if anyone joins us. Um, not really sure how this works. This is my first one of these, so we're going to give it a try. Uh, okay. So I've got my dogs out here with me, so hopefully they'll be relatively quiet. If not, sorry. We've got four of them out here, so they're all having a good time and playing today. It's a very nice day out. Okay, my pups. Claws are sharp. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm Shelby Corbett. I'm a volunteer with Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest. And today I'm going to be covering the brownie letterboxing badge. So if you're not a brownie, that's perfectly fine. Um, I didn't start letterboxing until I was like 15. So it's definitely for people of all ages. So when you are letterboxing, so for this badge, um, there are kind of two main... <laughs> resources there goes the dog um, there's kind of two main resources that I really used which was atlasquest.com and letterboxing.org they've both got really great um, letterboxing <laughs> clues and hints and tips and kind of everything like that so for the first bit of this badge you can do a couple different things to uh, complete it one of them is to look up the special words that are involved in letterboxing so letterboxing has a lot of its own vocabulary so, for example, they've got things called micro boxes, which those are a very, very small letter box that you'll often find hidden in a city type area. So think of the city like Austin, where it's there's not a whole lot of nature to hide. There's not a bunch of little rocks that you can hide your box under or anything like that. So they have to hide these really little bitty boxes. Um, so there's that's a micro box. There are also things called a hitchhiker, which is a letter box that doesn't have a home. So that's a letterbox that you find in another letterbox. And when you find it, you take it with you and hide it in another letterbox at a different location. So letterboxing has a lot of its own kind of vocabulary. It's pretty interesting to take a look at. So as you're going through this, kind of think of places that you could hide a letterbox, whether they're around your house or around your neighborhood or your town, which hiding around town is kind of hard right now with everybody stuck at home. Um, but just think of places you could maybe hide them after this is all kind of settled down a bit. And then also you can practice your seeking skills by having somebody at your house hide some like objects around and they can write clues for you to practice solving the clues. So for letterboxing, what you're going to need is a letterboxing kit. So this is mine that I made quite a while ago. And so inside of your kit, you'll have your stamp, a little booklet with uh, kind of, it's just made of computer paper cut into smaller squares and then hole punched and tied together with some ribbon. So some of the ones that I've done, so that's the front of mine, just has my, that's clear. It's got my name on it and my stamp. And so I found, the first one I did was in Midland. Out at, I believe that was at Midland College that I found that one. Um, there was one at Sol Ross in Alpine, one at Railroad Park in Alpine. There was a Stargazers one out at Camp Miter Peak that I did. Um, not that I made, that I found. Another one at Camp Miter Peak. And one of, that's, this one's pretty cool to find, Singing Rock, also out at Camp Miter Peak. So the other thing you're going to need in your kit is a ink pad or a magic marker. Um, my ink pad has long since dried up, but I've heard that a magic marker works just as well. And then when you go out letterboxing, you're also going to want to bring baby wipes or wet ones to wipe down your stamp when you're done using it. So there's a couple different ways that you can make your own stamp, and it can be something as simple as a bottle cap with uh, buttons glued to it or, any other, or a piece of foam that you cut into a cool shape and glue to the tip of the bottle cap. So it doesn't really have to be anything super fancy. But if you want, you can buy a stamp from a store or you can, there's other ways you can make your own rubber stamps. So that's what I kind of did this morning. Um, you can get either a stamp making kit from like Hobby Lobby or Amazon or Michaels and they range anywhere from about like $8 to like $40. But by no means do you need a fancy letter make, the fancy stamp making kit. Absolutely not. 
Um, I made one this morning out of, so you can use either a rubber pad like this one, um, or you can use even just like a regular old eraser. It does not have to be fancy at all. So the one I made this morning, what you're gonna do is you're going to draw out your design. So that's the design I drew this morning. It's Miter Peak with a paw print because last summer I adopted a dog named Miter from out in that area. So I put down my stamp on it because I wanted to make sure it fit and I traced around the outside so I knew it would be the right size. And then I drew my design. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take just a normal pencil and you're gonna just shade that design so it's nice and thick so that when you put pressure on it, it will transfer over to the pad. So let's do that real quick. So you put the stamp on it like this, and then you put it down and you just kind of rub on the back of it to help transfer the design over to the rubber. That didn't work very well. It usually looks a little better than that, but so yes, yeah, so you just apply pressure and rub on the back of it and it will um, transfer it over so that you can trace it out. So what I did for this one was I traced on the design so that it looks more, so that my stamp would come out more like something like this where you can see the design is traced out. And that's what I did on the one I made this morning was I traced out my design, um, which is a perfectly great way to do it. It's probably the easier way to do it. The way I did the one I made several years ago is I traced out around my design. I didn't trace out on the lines. I traced out the pink part, not where my ink was. Both are perfectly great ways to do this. Um, so my ink pad has dried out, so I can't show you what this one looks like when I transfer it, but it's really pretty easy. Um, a lot of people use their uh, stamp carving kits, but what I used was I used a flathead screwdriver and the end of a Ticonderoga pencil that I pulled the eraser out of with a pair of needle nose pliers, and then I squished it. It's easier and safer probably than using a knife. Uh, a lot of people use box cutters, but I just liked this because it was a little bit safer and easier for me. So what I did was I just took my flat head screwdriver and just traced out as much as I could with it. And then I took the end of the squished pencil and just kind of scooped out the eraser. And it worked pretty well. Um, so that's kind of how you make a stamp. There, Like I said, there's lots of ways to do it. There's tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos and bloggers and all kinds of people that can show you some really cool tips and tricks on how to make them. So if you were going to make a letter box to hide, the things that you would want to include are pretty similar to um, your normal kit. You would want to put your stamp in there. You would want to put your uh, little notepad in there for people to stamp in because when you find a letterbox, you put your stamp in their booklet and their stamp in your booklet. And um, so if you're making a kit, you want to make sure you include a notebook, whether it's for you or for you to hide. And the ones that you hide, some things to think about are to make sure that you have permission if you're going to hide it on private property. So don't go hide it in your neighbor's yard without asking their permission first. Okay. Um, because you don't want to be on other people's property without explicit permission from them. Um, so also you don't want to put an ink pad in the ones that you hide because they can dry out or freeze or get dirty or worst case scenario, they could bust and get all over your letterboxing kit and kind of ruin it. You definitely don't want that to happen after you put in all the effort. So after you have made your letterbox to hide, you're going to want to write some clues for it. So clues can be really kind of anything. They can be um, really straightforward, like go to this address, walk 10 feet in this direction, turn right at the big rock. You know, it can be really direct or they can be a little more creative with, um, they can be poetry or um, they can be numerical codes. There, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can do them. So I made just a little example of one. So, for example, if you were going to have the direction in it, turn left at the slide, so you hid your box at a park, and you wanted them to turn left at the slide. 
So you could have a fill in the blank where you could say turn blank at the slide and then write a little question, what is the opposite of right? Left. So a little question to help them fill in the blank. You could also scramble the letters in the word so that it was a little more difficult to figure out. So for this one, I just switched the first and the last letters of every word. Or you can do a numerical code, which is kind of fun to do. So I just took a sheet and I assigned each letter of the alphabet a number, 1 through 26. And then that way. And then you just use the corresponding letter and number to write out your numerical code. Oh, hi. I'm also from Midland, so that's super fun. Um, as I was saying earlier, there's tons and tons of letter boxes around Midland that you guys can go find. Um, I think I was looking, I think there was like 10 or 15 on letterboxing.org. So that'll be fun for your troop to do after this is all kind of settled down and we can all stop social distancing. Um, so like I was saying, letterboxes, a lot of them so will have like a theme. So some of them are Harry Potter themed. Some of them are, there was a couple I showed you guys earlier that both had ALF on them which is a TV show that is probably way older than most of your girls are. Um, but so there's some that are themed. Um, they can be themed about the place they're at or the person you hit it with or um, really kind of anything. So that's kind of a fun thing that you guys can do. You can pick a theme and design a stamp for that theme. And a lot of the letter boxes you'll find online will have like a long story that goes along with it. Um, so they'll have like a story about, I think there was one in Midland that had a story about the Petroleum Museum and then um, had clues on how to find it at the Petroleum Museum. That one I think used um, cardinal directions, so like north, south, east, west, all those. So you sometimes you'll need a compass if you're going letterboxing. Um, those ones are really kind of fun to go and find um, because they're a little harder to find and that's kind of fun. So when you're out letterboxing, you guys need to make sure that you bring an adult with you, first of all. That's really, really important is to bring an adult with you. And that you're also respecting nature, so you're not digging up plants. You're not ever going to have to dig up an actual plant if you're letterboxing. Most of them are pretty easy to uncover once you find the spot. They're usually hidden under rocks or um, some of them are hidden in in the ground but they're usually covered by just like a couple inches of dirt they're really not something you're going to have to be digging up big plants to get to so make sure you're respecting nature as you're out and about looking for these and then um make sure you cover the box back up really well when you're done because you don't want to make it too easy for the next person to find it and like girl scouts we always want to leave a place better than we found it you want to leave the letter boxes exactly how you found them um, let's see so, uh, I think that's kind of everything I needed to talk about. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead and throw them in the comments, and I will try my best to answer them. Uh, if you're using a knife, something to think about is knife safety. So, if you're using a box cutter or a sharp knife when you're making your stamps, make sure you have either an adult helping you or that you have completed some sort of knife safety training. That way you guys are not going to get hurt. That's why I really did like using the screwdriver and the pencil method um, because there I was not going to accidentally stab my finger or anything like that. So that's why I really liked that. Um, when you're hiding a letterbox, another thing to think about is um, if it's waterproof or not. You don't want to put all this effort into making a really cool letterbox with awesome clues and have it not... Um, survive well in the weather. So a box like these ones that are plastic and they close pretty well, those are great. But even with something like this, I would go ahead and stick it in a big freezer Ziploc bag and zip it tight to try, try to keep some more of the water out of it. Um, I think that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. Um, good luck letterboxing and stay safe and stay healthy.